Hello and welcome back to Let's Build. It's been a long time since we've come back to Minecraft to do some building. And before I stopped doing building in Minecraft, I had this area next to the village that I prepared for something else uh, that never came about. There's like a mini volcano there built out of basalt and stone, but it looked kind of bad, so I never bothered doing anything with it. So we're going to clear this out of the way using TNT. So I wanted to see how TNT would look exploding in slow motion. And it does look really cool, uh, however we do have the problem that basalt is pretty TNT proof, so we didn't get much blown up. Anyway, I cleared it out the old fashioned way with World Edit, made the area flat and smoothed off this rough edge over here, and cleared away this big area ready for our mana build. We're going to be building a country manor today, something you'd find in like the English countryside or, or kind of just western countrysides around the world I suppose, Europe etc. We've got the flat area, but one thing I wanted to do before we start is uh, build a wall between this area and the Disney castle. The Disney castle is a big build that's going to impose on what we're doing over here, so I need a barrier to stop us having that in the background all the time. So I'm using just spheres of sand uh, in a line to make a rough hill shape and the reason why I'm using sand is because uh, it falls down with gravity and creates a more natural looking landscape. And also it's easy to replace sand with stone and then give it a layer of dirt and grass on top. Anyway, let's head to the Builder's Shack and take a look at some designs to give us some ideas. So I love kind of looking at Google and just saying, all right, let's, let's find some manor houses and get some ideas. Took a look and uh, kind of filled my brain with, with ideas going forwards. So a lot of these builds are way too modern and I wasn't happy with what I saw, except when I found this, it's kind of gray, which fits, uh, fits the theme of our village for sure. It's simple, it's old, it looks like it fits into the era, and it's got a really cool selection of grounds outside. It's got some great gardens. So once I found out what the building was called, I, I looked up a bunch of images for it just to get a complete idea of what it looks like. And now it's time to jump in game and do the building. Okay, so let's get to it. We're going to start with doing the actual building first. This gives us a center point to the build that we can shape our gardens on the outside around. So I've mapped out a square using these dark oak logs you can see around the edge. And then I've built a very thick wall of uh, stone brick here in the middle, you can see. Now we've elected to use two blocks to make the walls and this makes things easy for us in the future when we want to carve into that to make windows. And then bringing those dark oak logs around the rim just to give us more of a frame. One thing I'm a big fan of is building a frame out of the dark oak logs around the outside and that gives you like a better picture. It's kind of funny because it's how they do things in real life as well, probably for different reasons. I mean, when people build buildings in real life, they already know what it's supposed to look like. They're just following plans, right? But for us, it also helps with the overall look because we're not really architects. We don't really plan out with blueprints before we build something and then copy the build. Our blueprints are in game. I mean, I'm sure if architects could, uh, could do this in real life, they would. Mostly just flying though, I think architects would probably fly if they, if they could. Anyway, yes, once the walls are complete and we've gone up three floors, you can see I'm, I'm making the roof out of red concrete. And the reason for that is just because red concrete is a very bright color uh, and it lets us kind of map forwards what we're going to do with the roof. For example, if the red concrete goes down and everything looks okay, we can then start the more intricate process of putting down these wooden stairs. And it takes so long to do the wooden stairs that if I do my designs and test things out with them, I'll be constantly going back and rebuilding those, those upside down wooden stairs. 
and that'll take forever. But the red concrete gives us a nice template that we can be sure we're happy with before we add the finishing touches of the wooden stairs. So we're doing the turrets. Are, they, are these kind of turrets around the outside? And we're going to have some kind of symmetry with our house. So the wall you see here on this side of the building is going to be copied and mirrored over on the other side of the building. And that makes things much easier in terms of getting things right this side. It means you don't have to worry about the other side. So I've got the windows here. They're just simple glass panes. I experimented a bit with some upside down stair blocks, but I wasn't happy with it. And you can see there I've got the flower boxes on the left. A copy and paste and, uh, and we get that same design on the other side. So you can see I made a slight mistake there on the left. The flower boxes are not using coarse dirt, they're using regular dirt. And you should try and use coarse dirt when you build a flower box. A flower box is as simple as just putting down some coarse dirt, surrounding it with trap doors, and then once you close the trap doors you get a kind of closed box effect on, on your dirt, and you can put flowers on top. I've put stairs or slabs or something like that underneath the flower box to make the build look a bit more solid. And then I come around to design the middle of the wall, and I've used some fence posts, some walls, and put down some lanterns. So you'll see me here flick it to night real quickly, just because I wanted to see how things look at night time. Some of the most impressive builds just look really majestic at night, and I think it's very important to get your lighting correct, so that when night does fall, your build still looks pretty cool, and it doesn't look pitch black dark. So yeah, I was pretty happy with the design of the red concrete rooftops here. So it was time to finalize things and put down the wooden stairs. One thing I did change, you can see here, is I connected the kind of peaked roofs on the outside to give us a square that's in the middle of the top of the building. And I'm not sure what's going to be inside that middle square, maybe like a skylight or an outside courtyard perhaps, that would be cool, but we'll see. And yeah, as you can see, the whole design on the right side has been copied over to the left, and that saved us a lot of time. So you can see me here experimenting with the rooftops themselves. The middle there has wooden stairs instead of wooden slabs, and I'm making it kind of like a jagged sawtooth design on top here as well. One of the problems with rooftops, like you can see here, is they can look a bit flat and plain. And so mixing in stairs and slabs is one way to brighten those up. A lot of people also like to brace their rooftops with uh, kind of like lines of different colored wood, or even rim the edges with something like cobblestone. While these effects do work, uh, it's just a style that I'm not happy with. There are no right or wrong answers with building in Minecraft, not really. There's some rules that you can obey to help you, but ultimately, go with what you like. And because the rest of our kingdom and our village is designed with without those bracings on the rooftops, that's what we've kept here. So we're around at the front of the manor house now, just literally building the left side. And again, this is something, well, I, actually, I don't know. I don't think we can really copy and paste this very well because of the nature of the way the roofs work. But we can certainly copy the windows at least. And also, as you can see, this, this manor house is going to have three floors. I've separated that by the wooden oak logs are inset by one block after the first floor, which is, I think, about six blocks high. And then the next two floors are also, I believe, five or six blocks high. And of course, decorating the front door as well with some rooftops and some stairs. Now, the main window at the front that's above the main door has to look pretty impressive. And you can see me here experimenting with different types of glass and then trying again at night time because the shaders I use make glass very reflective. So to avoid that, because I think that's a bit more of a modern look for our old building, I've gone with the glass panes that look more like nets. Anyway, that's most of the manor house kind of built, but I needed to get it out of the way now because I want to raise it up add some height to the build. So I've copy and pasted it away behind this hill so that I can 
build the gardens now. So you can see me here just raising up the land by about two or three blocks with stone brick. And then coming down with more layers around the outside of that. And what this is going to do when we copy and paste our manor house back onto this is elevate the build above the gardens and make it more of a focal point. Make sure it stands out a little bit more. And with the kind of raised platform kind of complete, I came around, uh, messed around with some different materials and things and built a waterfall and kind of little water feature. It's not quite a river, but it's, it's close enough. And this will just make our, our build look a bit more interesting. Anyway, there we go. The platform for the house is complete, so it's time to copy and paste that bad boy back into his spot. And now we've got a water feature, and what do you do with a water feature? Well, you build a bridge. So we've got cobblestone here, and I wanted to kind of have like a, an arch bridge, but I wanted to get the proportions just right. So I used World Edit to create a kind of wonky, a wonky circle or an ellipse, and that gives me the exact numbers and, and look for a perfect curve on this bridge, and then I literally just copied that over. Not with World Edit though, just by looking at the numbers and counting out how many blocks made the curve. And then finishing off this bridge with some cobblestone stairs, uh, some dark oak wood for the floor, cobblestone walls, and again these cool lanterns on some, uh, some wooden fences. So previously in the build, in the village, and in the kingdom, I've always used glowstone blocks. Glowstone blocks are great, they did the job like 20 years ago, but uh, these days these new lanterns look super amazing. I mean, I, I call them new, but I just haven't built in Minecraft for so long. Maybe they've been around for a while. But anyway, they look really cool, they keep with the theme, and also they don't need redstone to turn on, which is a great boon. So what we're going to be doing here is building a wild garden. What's a wild garden? Well, it's kind of like a garden, just a bit more wild. We've dug out space for a path, a loop, that's going to circle this big gazebo in the middle. And I want the gazebo to rest on a kind of like small pond, so you can see me here put some water in and then use some wooden slabs to link up a bridge and then fill some gravel in for the path. I used gravel instead of right clicking with a shovel to make a path just because I preferred the look. And also you can see because this is a wild garden I've put these leaves on top of the gazebo to make it look even more kind of untamed. And that's a look that I'm super happy with. and then coming around the edge with a big wall to keep in this wild, untamed garden. So with the walls around the edge of the path, something that I think works really well is not using large sections of walls, instead putting them down in groups of two or three. It helps break up the build a bit, and you keep the wall look, but you don't congest the build so what are all these kind of like stone brick tubes you see me building here? Well what I've done is I've put saplings in the middle of them and the idea is when you bone mill those saplings hopefully the tree won't grow unless it's got room to grow. And that helps you get only the bigger trees from your saplings. It doesn't always work. Sometimes the tree just grows through the cobblestone or the wood or whatever you've used because it wants to be difficult. But for the most part it's better than manually making all of your trees which can be a bit of a pain. So with the wild garden complete, it's time to come over and build what every single manor house in the world needs. And that's a hedge maze, right? So we've got this kind of rounded square rectangle thing. And we've pasted a circle to give it a rounded edge at the front. And that's just going to make our maze area a little bit more interesting. And again, just smoothing it out, adding some detail and uh, turning those blocks here into staircases just to give the build a smoother, more polished look.
and then connecting that maze section up to the gardens that are in front of our manor house. And now this part that I was looking forward to a lot, we're going to be designing a hedge maze. I've surrounded it here with leaves. They're about two blocks high, which is high enough to make a challenging maze. And then I used a, uh, a shovel to carve out my maze. I spent way too long designing this maze. For some reason I wanted this maze to be actually hard to solve, even though I don't think anybody is ever actually going to have to solve it, who knows. But still, it was very fun to do. And you can see there's two large sections of, uh, of path that we're going to put a fountain and a gazebo in, because that will help kind of bring the maze to life. In fact, here you can see me building said fountain. It's pretty simple, because I didn't want it to dominate the build too much. But what I did want to do was put the bottom as lapis lazuli blocks. In this shader pack, they have a really cool blue glow that's going to help light up our maze. I don't know what a bell does in Minecraft, but I thought, sure, why not? I'll put it in the little gazebo there at the edge. And also there's a dotted section of leaves in the maze that I kind of like as well. Now leaves do make great hedges, and so why not keep that going and put the hedges all around the manor house. But also mix up this flat straight edge on the gardens, again just to give the build a bit more, you know, variety going on there. And some mossy cobblestone out front as a path for our main entrance to the manor house. Now here we go, we've got to build a fountain here, and I spent way too long going backwards and forwards on the fountain build. Everything was either way too ambitious, looked too big, it was the focal point of the build and it didn't want to be, or it just looked too terrible, too small, and not impressive at all. So you can see here, what I finished on was a fairly simple build. And now simply putting down some logs, some leaves, and some fence posts as an entrance to our maze with some lanterns to light that up. I think it's pretty cool. And then polishing off the rest of the gardens with, uh, with some hedges as well. Now another thing a good manor house or some country grounds need are walls that kind of keep the whole thing boxed in. So once I built a small segment and was happy with it, I went around the entirety of the build copying that out. And it's pretty cool. It's like a bunch of stone bricks, some iron bars, and, and some, some staircases. And they look pretty cool. Nothing too flashy, but certainly not simple by any means. And also that's the kind of theme I want to go with on the main gate as well. Not too flashy, but not too simple. So I just used some iron bars and some lanterns. And now to plumb this whole thing into the village, I needed to build a road that would connect us to the main hub of the village. I'm using, I think, stone slabs here, and just carving out a simple path, doing a bit of terraforming, digging away some blocks, adding some, and then adding some trees as well, just to make it look a bit more natural and pretty. Now we're trying again to put down these red concrete tubes with a sapling in, to see if we can get some really, really big trees out of these saplings, and again, mixed success. Sometimes the trees grow through the red concrete, sometimes they don't. But them's the breaks. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And also I wanted to put this flat section inside the grounds as trees as well. So we've got like a mini apple orchard in there that people can come outside and go and pick some apples from maybe. And then with one last pass around the grounds to put in these roses, these peonies? Is that what they're called? Are they called peonies? I don't know. But there we go. The build is finished. And I'm super happy with this. I think I'm really happy to come back to Minecraft building. And I'm very pleased with what we've achieved. We've got our first guest as well. Traveling merchant with his llamas, Dolly and Dot. And you can see here a quick switch to night mode and a slow-mo zoom in cam shows us that when night falls, this build really does come to life. I'm really happy with how this area looks at night time. Especially the lapis lazuli in the fountain. That really looks cool. 
So thank you for watching Let's Build. We're going to be doing these once a week, so make sure you check back next week for the next build. I really want to complete the kingdom. It's something we started but never finished, so I've got my eyes fixed on getting this whole area completely done. Like and subscribe, and until next time, take care.